Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So there's some pretty interesting news out there. It looks like Valve is going back after the console market. However, it's an x86 handheld, so is it really a console? It's basically just another handheld PC. But this is exciting for a lot of different reasons, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about here today. But before we get into it, if you like videos like this, make sure you smash that like button. Please subscribe, please share with friends, that really does help me out. And let's go ahead and check out what video cards had to say about this. All right, so the Valve Steam Pal, I don't really love that name, maybe it's just a work in progress, a handheld gaming console rumored to feature an AMD APU. So that's not too unusual. We have something like the Aya Neo already out there, but let's go ahead and see what they have in here. All right, so according to rumors, Valve's preparing to launch its own handheld gaming console by the end of the year. That was kind of a big deal for me. I was like, wow, this is obviously something they've been planning for a while if they're that close to launching, which is referenced under Valve's unreleased controller code name, Neptune. Okay, so this has been reported by Steam Database, uh, website operator, Pavel, I'm not even going to try to say that and butcher it. Valve's Neptune controller uh, has first been spotted in the Steam client in September of last year. So basically, they've been working on another Steam controller. Additionally, there's a report from Ars Technica claiming that the Steam Pal is actually Valve's new gaming console. Uh, the site is citing its own sources familiar with Valve's plans. This device would feature a Linux operating system. I'm gonna come back to that because that would be huge, uh, would reportedly be announced by the end of this year. So they're the ones saying that it should be out by the end of this year, but Gabe Newell kind of hinted at that and we'll go through that here in a sec. Steam Pal is still in the early prototype stage, uh, but allegedly controller layout is similar to the Nintendo Switch except it won't be detachable. So very similar to things like the Aya Neo, which is what they're talking about down here. The biggest thing is, is, you know, those run Windows, this is gonna run Linux. Um, but yeah, so there are other devices out there currently that would be pretty similar to this, but the big difference is this is the first major player out there that's jumping into this market. In here, they just kind of reference the article from Ars Technica. There's really not a whole lot of information there. Uh, no further details at the moment, but let's go ahead and see what Gabe said that gets people thinking that this might be true. You will get a better idea by the end of the year, and it won't be the answer that you expect. You'll say, aha, now I get what you're talking about. So basically just that Gabe has something coming out at the end of this year. So they're basically linking a few different rumors together and smashing it into one cohesive thing, which seems probable, especially considering things like the Aya Neo and the One X player and a bunch of other devices are really starting to gain popularity. Now, this is the piece of information that I find most interesting. Furthermore, there's new rumor on Reddit claiming that the device will be powered by AMD APU codenamed Aerith. At this moment, AMD is only known to be working on Van Gogh APU and its successor, Dragon Crest, both said to be powered by Zen 2 core architecture and Navi 2, or RDNA 2, integrated graphics. Uh, these low-powered 9-watt APUs, that's, that's a big deal right there, because that's right where you really want a mobile handheld to be at, sub-10 watts, uh, targeted at handheld devices, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Van Gogh slash Aerith is to feature a quad-core CPU with SMT, so four-core, eight-thread, and is rumored to feature eight CUs, so 512 stream processors, of RDNA 2. So the architectures are basically going to be the same as the Series X, S, and uh, the PlayStation 5. Obviously, just much, much smaller scale. And they have an update here. Basically, Aerith is Van Gogh. So those specs that we cited here are most likely going to be correct. All right, so I know a lot of you guys are probably sitting there going, well, who really cares? It's another handheld. I'm not super interested in that. Well, there's a few reasons why this is going to be a big deal. As I mentioned, a lot of the x86 handhelds that are out there are made by small Chinese manufacturers. For example, the Aya Neo that I ordered like two months ago keeps getting delayed because they keep making little changes to it, which is fine. You know, the better product I get, you know, I'm happy with that. But they have serious issues getting supply because it's a very small company. Somebody like Valve, who's going to order hundreds of thousands, if not possibly millions of units, they're going to have a much easier time getting the supply that they need from AMD and the uh, DRAM manufacturers. That, that seems to be a real issue right now 
for somebody like Aya Neo. So this will definitely make it easier for somebody who is interested in such a device to get one. So that's the, to me, that's a good thing. Now, the other big thing that I mentioned was if they do go with a Linux operating system, which knowing Valve, they're really trying to push Linux as a serious alternative to Windows. Uh, I did this video not too long ago showing that it's already a pretty good alternative. That just means that we will see more games in the future if this device is true and it's successful or even semi-successful. More games will natively support Linux or have native Linux options available. So that's a good thing. So if you're a Linux gamer out there, that just means even if you don't buy this device, you will likely get more native games, which means you get more performance, which is always awesome. And shifting back to the supply, if Valve is able to get hundreds of thousands, millions of units of these things, that also means the really expensive options that are out there right now, all the Intel based ones like the uh, X1 player, those are like $1,000 plus. The Neo, I think was like seven or 800 bucks. That's a little pricey. Obviously, Valve is going to be able to get a better deal due to both discounts. That means these other companies are going to have to lower their prices. So now Celso over at Cortex is telling me the rumor is that this is supposed to be $299. I'm going to throw that right out the window unless this is a lockdown system, which I hope that it's not. Uh, Valve and Steam and those guys, they seem to be pretty okay with open platforms. So if you want to load Windows on it, you should be able to do so. And if that's the case, that means there's no guarantee that you're gonna buy your games through Steam. And once again, if that's the case, they have to sell this at a profit. And I know for a fact that a machine like this is going to cost more than $299 to build. So more likely I'm thinking $499, but that's still significantly cheaper than any of the other options out there right now. And realistically, compared to something like a Nintendo Switch, that's still a better deal. Number one, you're getting more powerful hardware. If the Switch Pro happens to be close in performance, which I doubt it will be, but even if it is and it's still cheaper, you have to think about things like the cost of games. On a Nintendo Switch, they're all like 50 or $60, even if they're really old. On Steam, games are really, really cheap. Accessories, like if you want a controller and a dock and all that kind of stuff. With a, you know an x86 machine, you can just use your Xbox controller or PlayStation controller or whatever you have right now. You don't have to buy extra accessories. So even if it's more expensive, it's technically still significantly cheaper than going to like a Nintendo Switch and rebuying your whole library all over again. And the final point that I'm really excited about, if this happens to be true, is this will likely be the push that both AMD and Intel really need to really start investing into APUs. It looks like both of them are starting. We're, we're at the beginning of the APU revolution here, uh, especially now that Intel's really starting to try with GPUs on their CPUs. So this would obviously continue. These guys are gonna be pushing more performance per watt, more cores, better, better GPU performance on their APUs. And what that means is that's gonna translate across the board. Desktop APUs will obviously benefit from this, so on and so forth. So to me, that that's great. That means everybody's gonna win. So if you're a PC gamer out there, you wanna stick with desktop or even a laptop gamer, you know, you'll have better options in the future. And realistically, that should fill in that gap that we're starting to see in that like 100 to $200 GPU market that seems to be dead on the desktop side right now. So I think that this could help fill that hole that we're seeing in the market. The more entry level, more budget friendly gamer, they're gonna have an option finally. Now it's not gonna happen overnight, but I think down the road, uh, especially with devices like this coming out, that shouldn't be too far off. Things like DDR5 will start coming out soon and that will also help. And one more thing, I forgot about this. Uh, we will obviously be seeing the true benefits of something like FSR from AMD, their version of DLSS, as the Switch Pro is rumored to have DLSS for their games. Um, FSR will obviously be front and center in those comparisons as, you know, these are much weaker devices. They're going to need every trick that they can to run high resolutions or high frame rates. But with AMD rumored to be coming out with FSR next month and over time, hopefully getting it in as many games as possible, that means that these little devices might be able to punch way above their weight. If you look at the specs of this, so 512 stream processors, uh, so you times that by two, so that's 1024, likely running at about two gigahertz, 
you're looking at about a two teraflop uh, RDNA 2 GPU. So that's probably going to be right in between a PS4 and a PS4 Pro, which has four teraflops of GCN. So the IPC uplift isn't great enough to match something like a PS4 Pro, which is like RX 470 level, but it's definitely going to be faster than a baseline PS4. And that means all 8th gen games, so that's the PS4 and Xbox One generation games, should be able to run at least as well as they do on the baseline consoles, likely at higher frame rate or with higher fidelity. So this is reasonably powerful, guys, considering it's a 9-watt package. I'm very interested to see how this all pans out. I'm also interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. Um, are you guys interested in devices like these? Or are you more interested in like the added benefit of devices like these coming to market, filling in a hole in the PC gaming market that, well, we need to be filled desperately. The current GPU shortage has shown that entry level GPUs really need to be a thing because not everybody wants to spend five, six, seven, eight hundred, two thousand dollars on a graphics card. And there just needs to be an alternate solution, especially since we're seeing these mining booms come every two to three years. So having other devices for PC gaming or x86 gaming, to me, can't go wrong. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the Linux support. If you guys haven't seen my previous video, link is in the description below. Linux gaming is pretty awesome right now if all you really do is game on your PC. So it might be worth checking out. It doesn't cost you anything. So that's worth a shot. Well, alrighty, guys, if you like videos like this, once again, please smash the like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. I thank you all for your support. And that's really all I have for you here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.